an entitled Karen screams at me at an airport, all because I won't let her spoiled child play video games on my laptop. But after experiencing something similar to this in the past, I decided that I was not going to allow this lady to bother me another second. And honestly, I'm kind of wondering why I'm such a Karen magnet in my life. Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that I'm kind of cursed with this sort of thing, where I deal with entitled parents while I'm at the airport, because almost the exact same situation that I've experienced before repeated itself again recently. Let me explain. I was traveling for work again and cutting things close to be home for Christmas. And this time, it happened on a layover on my way home. My next flight wasn't to be in a few hours, so I did my usual thing of finding an airport cafe, plugging in my personal laptop, just so I wouldn't run the battery dry. Now, for context, I play retro games on my laptop, and this time, I was playing Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. I had to wear headphones to avoid disturbing anyone, but eventually, I felt a small hand tugging on my pant leg. It was a small boy, probably a bit younger than the one I dealt with previously, which is something I posted about previously online. He pointed out the bright red game controller I was using and asked what it was. He thought it was for an Xbox, and internally, I was mildly offended by that, being the retro Nintendo fan that I am. But only a complete jerk would be angry at a kid for not knowing about something that existed before they were born. I was tired and not in the mood to be bothered, so I politely asked the kid to please go back to his parents and leave me be. He just stared at me like what I said didn't register. So I asked him again, and when that didn't work, I asked a nearby employee for help, while also asking for a coffee refill. The employee found the kid's mother nearby and ushered the boy back to her. And I'm sure at this point you know exactly where this is going, because moments later I was being confronted by an entitled mother dressed in all black and white while red in the face like a bad newspaper headline, and was demanding to know what my problem was. Apparently, I can't just play video games in public and expect to not attract the attention of children nearby. I sighed because I knew exactly where this was going. Not my first rodeo after all. But in most other situations like this, I usually get a dirty glance from the entitled parent, but after the incident I experienced previously, in which an entitled mother literally destroyed my laptop, I was much more on guard. I stood up and told her it was not my job to entertain her child. It's not the job of the cafe employees or other people in the cafe either. I said that it was her job. Either bring something for her kid to game on or find a way to entertain him herself. I literally don't care, but I do want you to leave me out of it. She then acted extremely offended and called me a giant man baby. I told her that was exactly the sort of thing a Karen would say, which only seemed to anger her further. Soon the same employee was back and tried to break things up. She politely asked us both to calm down, but the entitled mother refused and said I should be thrown out for insulting her. I finally had enough and said that I sued the last person like her who demanded I entertain their son because they broke my computer and got arrested and there are cameras all around us to see who started what. So go ahead, try me. Well, the entitled mother started huffing and I calmed down enough to sit back down and act polite enough and then say to please just leave me alone. The employee sided with me and asked her to just calm down and leave me be. The entitled mother then huffed and dragged her kid away by the hand while he cried about the games that I was playing. For a good while, she was repeatedly glaring at me. Her son played on what I assume was her phone, which meant she had nothing to do herself. But then they left and later came back with a coloring book and a fresh pack of crayons I think she grabbed at the overpriced gift shop. And her son played on that till it was time to go. But this isn't quite over yet. This entitled mom was somehow on the same flight as me, which made her target me before boarding. She made sure to be as close to me as possible, and her little boy had nasty gas, so he kept farting right in my direction. But I stayed silent and kept my sunglasses on so she could not see where I was looking. She tried acting smug looking back at me, but the smugness was short-lived as I made sure to act completely indifferent and silent to not show any irritation. Someone else called her out on her kids farting too, and she had a short argument with them about it as well. She later seemed to look like she sucked on a lemon as she saw that I got to board before her to go to business class, and she had to board for coach a few minutes later. She mouthed a swear word at me as she went by my aisle seat. I was off the flight before the entitled mom, so I didn't see her again when leaving the airport, and when my wife picked me up, I told her what happened, and she just rolled her eyes and called me a Karen magnet, and at this point, honestly, I kind of believe it. This story is actually 
actually really crazy to me because this is something we've covered on the channel about a year ago. I had to do some digging, but apparently he had an exact replica of this situation. Only the other lady actually destroyed his laptop and she ended up getting arrested and he sued her. So in the grand scheme of things, this is not nearly as bad as what he went through before. And I think it has to do with the fact that this time this guy was not going to be taken off guard because the previous time this happened, that Karen kind of ran up out of nowhere and broke his stuff. But this time this guy was like, nope, I'm not going to let that happen again. So seriously, to the original poster, I'm so sorry you had to deal with this literally a year later. Like the timing of that is really funny. Like I'm looking at his previous date and he posted his previous experience in October of 2022. And now a little over a year later and history's repeating itself. Like seriously, that is like crazy odds. But at least this time around, you were ready for anything this crazy lady would have done. Because I don't think anybody wants a repeat of what happened last time. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My job tried to punish me for going on a pre-planned vacation as they pretended like they didn't know about my vacation time and instead tried to call me into work when I was literally out of town. And I'm honestly so glad that I don't work there anymore because those people truly sucked. Here's what happened. So back between 2006 and 2008, I was a tax associate at the most well-known tax service in North America. I did very well in the class you take, which determines your eligibility to be hired, as well as teaching you how to do taxes. And as a result, I was hired. I bounced from office to office as newbies do, and I was doing well enough that I was always the first to be called if a shift needed covered. After my first season with them went so well, I was invited back for the next year, and the class was free because of the invitation back. In case you wonder why the class is every single year, it's because tax rules change every year and we have to keep up. Shortly after the class was over, which I aced by the way, I was approached by the lady who ran the district. She wanted to open a seasonal office in a Walmart five kilometers outside the city that I worked in. She wanted me as a primary associate there, in part because I'd done so well in the previous year, with my acing the class also playing a big role in it, not to mention the fact that I have a background in security and I also live about 20 kilometers closer to this Walmart than anyone else on the staff. I wasn't going to be a manager, but I was going to be the only full-time associate. I'd open and close almost every day and often be the only associate on site. It was basically my baby to take care of. There were hints that it also might lead to advancement in the company as well. So I was pretty excited at the opportunity. At first, everything was great. The Walmart staff liked me, the customers liked me, my boss liked me. I mean, I was blasting through customers. Only maybe five people walked away due to having to wait, and this is out of the few hundred who approached my little office beside the produce section. Two months in, right before the tax season really heated up, I had a weekend I'd booked off the same day they'd hired me. I was going out of the province to see my family. The trip had been set long before they hired me, and I had made it clear that I wasn't going to be around. The schedule accurately reflected that, so the weekend arrives and I just go. I had a good time and I came back Monday evening so I could be back Tuesday morning. When I got home, I checked my answering machine for messages and there were three new messages. Two from my boss, the district lady, and one from the scheduler. I don't remember everything word for word, so I'll just paraphrase. Message one was Saturday morning at approximately seven in the morning. They said to me, hi, sorry to do this, but we need you in today. The employee that was going to replace you, their car broke down, so they can't make it. The second message was Saturday afternoon, approximately 2 p.m. They said to me, I'm very disappointed in you for not responding to me and not showing up. I'll be making some changes. Then the third message on Monday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning was the scheduler. They said to me, your hours have changed this week. Please call me when you get the chance. Now, at this point in my life, I'm not a kid out of high school, and I've had enough experience with screw jobs that I'm absolutely not going to crawl on my hands and knees apologizing and begging for my job. If you're going to be petty and mean, just just because you messed up, then trust me, we're going to have some problems. And so we did. I called the scheduler and was told I was suspended for a week and to call my boss after a week to get back on the schedule. She said the boss was trying to put me in my place and teach me how to be a good manager. They said that I'd get back on the schedule after the week was over. Well, I brought up my pre-planned and scheduled time off and also that I wasn't a manager. I was a regular employee. The scheduler was very uncomfortable, but she was only doing what she was told. They really
really did need you, she said to me. Just call the boss in a week. I said sure, and then I didn't. I was furious, and I wasn't the one that was about to be put in their place. I called a few of the customers who I'd been working with, and I explained that I was no longer working there, and they chose to keep me as their tax girl regardless. It really wasn't intended as revenge, even though it sounds that way. I mean, the company wasn't going to make more than it cost to have someone do their taxes anyways. This was purely a customer relationship thing, and I also like to finish what I start. But the real revenge was accepting my suspension. The entire week I was suspended, I made sure to stop in at the Walmart to see if I knew who they'd scheduled for my shift, and if we were friendly, then help me out with the quirks of this location. But there was never anyone there. I confirmed with the Walmart staff, all week they had no one working there. Paying Walmart to rent space and getting nothing but a bad reputation for it is all thanks to the heavily advertised new location having zero employees. It remained that way for the rest of the season, literally for two months. Now, the boss never called me, and I never called her. I have some kind of pride. I have no idea how it impacted her professionally, and I stayed far away from taxes ever since. I got another job before my suspension was over, and honestly, I never looked back. Wow, that tax company is really stupid. Like, seriously, how do you not understand what is already pre-planned? Like, the original poster pretty much spelled it out perfectly. They're not going to be here for this one weekend, and you need to schedule around that, otherwise you're just going to have to deal with it. So the fact that they try to act like you're on call or something like that just to go in and do your job, even though you perfectly articulated that you're not going to be there, and you probably have it in writing as well, that in my opinion is the mark of a place you definitely do not want to work at. Because trust me, if they can violate your vacation time, then they will just keep doing that over and over again. Like the fact that they did that to this employee basically sent a solid signal to them that yeah, I don't want to work here. These people suck and I'm definitely not going to stick around. And I know if I was in your shoes, I definitely would have done the exact same thing. My wife has ruined my only week off that I get from my job. And at this point, I'm trying not to lose it as I feel like my mental health is starting to decline. Here's what happened. So I want to start off by saying that I work a very demanding job. There are very few, if any, times during the year when I have the luxury to take a few days off to myself. When I get home from work between cooking dinner and doing dishes and taking care of chores around the house, I get maybe two hours a day to relax. My wife gets upset if I don't spend all that time with her, so I don't get to watch my shows, play my video games, or read my books. I've told her many times that I need time to relax and do things that I enjoy, and she'll agree with me, but then start giving me things to do or get me to do something else with her within 30 seconds of me starting. So anyways, two months ago, I asked my boss if I could use a week of vacation between Christmas and New Year's. It's a slow week, and we made arrangements to ensure that I am covered during those days for emergencies. I told my wife that this will be my time to do all the things that I want, just so I can de-stress from life and catch up on the things that I really enjoyed. I also plan to clean up my office and organize my files, which is something that has stressed me out for a while. My wife agreed and told me that she was very happy I'm going to be able to do some self-care. This weekend, she informed me that she had scheduled the chimney cleaners for Wednesday because I would be home. She wrote down a list of things for me to do, such as go to Home Depot, clean up the yard debris, pick up groceries for the week, go through boxes in the basement and organize organize everything. I then politely informed her that I would not be doing any of those things, that this week was about self-care and addressing my needs. And with only four real days minus Christmas, I was not going to add additional work. She then told me to just get to what I had time for. On Tuesday, my wife decided to work from home. This prevented me from organizing my office since we share an office. I put on one of my video games and I started to play. Ten seconds later, my wife came flying in and told me to turn it off because it was too loud while she was trying to make phone calls. I told her to shut the office door, but she told me it was entirely too loud and sounded unprofessional in the background. So I pulled out a book and started reading on the couch. I did that for about an hour when my wife decided to come into the living room and work on her laptop. She turned on the Kardashians, and I sarcastically asked if that wouldn't make her sound more unprofessional in the background. She replied that she'll just mute it if a call comes in, which is exactly what she did. So after 15 minutes of trash TV and loud business phone calls, I went into our room to read my book. At this point, my wife kept interrupting me every few minutes. She would ask me how my book was going. How much more do I have to go? What's it about? She 
asked me what I wanted for lunch or what I wanted for dinner. And the questions went on and on and on. Eventually, it was time for dinner, so I just gave up and I put my book down. Well, today she decided to work from home again. I told her it wasn't necessary, but she told me that she wanted to work from home. I replied by saying, yes, but no offense, I don't want you here. She laughed and said, I know, it's your self-care week, but I don't feel like going in. We can both be here. So I could not be in the office. I had to be up early for chimney cleaners and could not be in the living room because they were working in there. I went into our bedroom and started reading my book and she came in and informed me that I needed to stay with the chimney sweepers in case they had questions because she had work calls that she had to take. I was unable to concentrate with them working so I just sat there. When they finally finished, I took my book and I started reading and that's when my wife decided to come into the living room and turn on the Kardashians again. So I migrated into the bedroom, laid down on my bed, and continued reading my book. And guess what happened next? Ten minutes later, she came in with her laptop and laid down on the bed next to me. I did my best to ignore the typing and phone calls and just concentrate on my book. Then she started snoring. Not like heavy breathing, but literal congested, wheezing, choking, snoring. So I let out a sigh, I got up, and I headed into the living room. I laid down on the couch and I put on one of my shows. Well, that lasted 15 minutes before my wife came in and started talking through it. She kept asking questions about it. She was criticizing it, talking about how it's clear why she wouldn't watch it, asking how many episodes there are and how long each episode is, and so on. Finally, after needing to rewind the same part eight times, I accepted defeat and I just turned it off. My wife informed me that she thinks she's going to work from home for the rest of the week. She saw the look on my face, smiled and said to me, I know I'm cramping your style and ruining your week off, but it's a quiet week and it works for me to be at home. I said to her, I love spending time with you, but I need my alone time. I haven't been able to do anything for me and it's damaging my mental health. She insists that she understands and that she wants me to have time to myself, but it seems to be in theory only and not in practice. I have found myself snapping at her and being tense with her and I don't want that. I'm afraid that I'm going to explode on her and I don't know how to make myself any more clear, but she doesn't seem to be taking me seriously, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. In my opinion, it really seems like your wife is doing all of this on purpose. Like, she is literally following you room to room, and just bothering you non-stop. She even took off the entire week just so she could work from home. So I'm serious when I say this, I don't think she cares about your mental health at all. It sounds like you have a very demanding job, and your wife literally just does not care. I don't know if maybe this is because you didn't want to do chores during your week off, but for some mysterious reason that she can't seem to communicate, she feels the need to ruin your entire week off, and that in my opinion is so toxic. There is literally no good excuse for that, and if she really cared, she would go back to work and leave you alone. Because right now, this is honestly obnoxious. And if I were in your shoes, I would go to some kind of hotel and start doing things for me without her being around. Because the way she's acting right now is completely inappropriate. My wife divorced me because she is completely convinced that I cheated on her. But despite the fact that I never did, I'm now struggling to figure out how to convince her that I definitely did not cheat and I've never cheated in any previous relationship in my life. Here's what happened. So yeah, the title pretty much says it all. And I'll get straight into the reason that she thinks that I cheated. I'm a 30 year old male and I became acquaintances with this new girl that I will call Lily. Lily is not her real name and she started working here about four months ago. We're working together on a big project for a client, and this requires me to talk to her for most of the day. I have never met her outside of work, and we have never flirted, made suggestive comments to each other, and never texted about anything else other than the project. I have no interest in spending time with her because for one, I'm married, and two, I don't find her attractive. My wife sometimes visits my office to bring by food or whatnot and sees me talking to her. Somehow, Lily has a friend who has a friend who knows my wife. Lily apparently talked to her friend about me that she likes me and that we became super close, which we definitely didn't. And this was then relayed back to my wife. This happened about two months ago and my wife mentioned passively in a conversation but didn't accuse me of anything. I decided not to ask Lily about it just so I don't make things awkward at work. I should also reiterate that my wife has been divorced before because her ex-husband did cheat on her, which has led her to have trust issues in her following relationships. Well, last month she visited my office 
again and saw me and Lily laughing about a mess up I made on the project. Again, nothing outside of work related things. When I got home, she blew up on me about infidelity while also screaming how I could do this to her. Now, I was royally confused and at this point, she didn't really mention a name. I had not gone to any bars, women's houses or anything like that without her in the past couple of years. So I was confused on what she was talking about. Then she said something along the lines of, I knew I shouldn't have trusted Lily. She looks like a lady of the night. And then suddenly it all made sense. Well, to make a long story short, she divorced me. We don't have kids and the house is in my name and we have a prenuptial agreement. So it wasn't difficult except for the fact that my wife doesn't trust me enough to know that I didn't cheat. And by the way, I never have cheated in any relationship and she knows that. So it's not like it's happened before. I mean, how do I make her believe that I never cheated? What should I do? I don't think you're going to like what I'm going to say, but I don't think there is anything you can do. Like your wife clearly just jumped to some weird conclusion, all because of a coworker that you are definitely not attracted to. And to that end, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that because the way you're being treated right now is really inappropriate. It's crazy to me that your wife would throw away your entire relationship all because she suspected that you cheated on her with a coworker, which clearly did not happen. And honestly, for you to get the short end of the stick in this scenario really is overall completely unfair. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.